last one we're going to do uh, is what's called a product box and uh, completely on brand. I've built a product uh, that I'm looking to sell the folklore album by Taylor Swift. And so what I will do is go into that one. Um, similarly, uh, this was built sort of uh, just with groups and this one uses columns. So it's a little bit different. Uh, and so I will pop open list view. Uh, we're gonna open the group. Inside of the group is the columns and inside the columns, obviously a column image is on the one side, the right side is the rest of the stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna go back here and I will build this. So we've got the group block. Uh, and inside the group block, I said we were gonna do columns because I, uh, we'll start with 50-50, but I'll change it. Um, left side, we wanna add an image. Just so happens I've got that ready. Uh, and copy this. So the right side, we're gonna put a heading, Folklore by Taylor Swift. And after that, I got a paragraph text that I stole. And then we're gonna also add a button. So by Folklore. Now, as you can see, and I think this is where people start to understand like how powerful the settings are and how folks know how th this can be built sort of on the fly is um, to be able to take this down to this within a matter of a few clicks is, is pretty, pretty important. Um, WordPress allows that to be done. Uh, and that makes me as a designer, super excited. Cause it's like, all I got to know is the elements I need in a section. I can throw them in there and then I can style them without having to use any custom C generally any custom CSS or any, any code, any file uploads, FTP or whatever. And this is sort of the power that we're starting to see, uh, unfold here. So, uh, I'm gonna, I've got the entire group selected. Uh, I want to add my border cause I'm a border fan. And again, I'm gonna add some spacing around there. Uh, I'm gonna just give us an update so we can see where we're at. Okay, obviously we wanna change the width of the columns to be a little bit more um, and better. So we're gonna, as a reminder, come down here. I've got that 35% and I'm checking the column width down here. So uh, I click the image and here's how to use breadcrumbs. I know what's in it, sometimes hard to select the column itself. So I come down to the breadcrumbs to grab the column to be selected. Uh, I'm going to type 35 here. I don't want pixels for obvious reasons, percentage. Um, and we can see here inside of this column, there's, a, there's the 30 pixel block gap. I keep talking about the block space and that comes by default. I want everything inside of this column to have the same smaller um, sizing. So what I'm going to do is go into the column, again, using the breadcrumb to select the column going over to settings, selecting block spacing. And I just, I wanna do 20 pixels even seems like maybe too much. So maybe I'll just do 10. And again, line height to me is a little bit off in the context of just uh, two lines. So going into the paragraph, selecting line height, changing that to 1.5. Uh, I'll do a quick update and we can see where we're at almost there. Uh, this button's a little big. I want that to come down here. The text up here is a little too big. Uh, I think that was the H2. So as a reminder, I've got extra small and large padding. So I'm going to come down here to extra small and large uh, down here, 24 pixels. So I go back to where I want to change it can make that down. And here's something that's also really interesting and cool about uh, columns. Now we can see by default, it aligns everything to the top, but because I kind of want to come up with this look, what that is, is if you go to columns and you click on this icon, you can align them to the middle or you can align them to the bottom if you wanted to, which it probably has some use cases, but generally I like to do middle. And so now that I've done middle, I go to update and I'm going to refresh. It centers vertically, you know, the contents here. Uh, this, because it's the tallest one, doesn't need to be aligned. But 
usually if uh, this kind of has just a better look. And so this would be a product box. I'll, I'll pause for questions and then we'll go into how do we use these and what do we do with these now that we've built them? So any questions specifically around uh, the product box? I don't see any questions, Brian, but you're doing great. This is super cool to watch you build it. Cool. Um, uh, as oh, a, actually, a, sorry to yeah. interrupt you. There was a question that just came in. Uh, can we yep. see it on mobile, please? Uh, yes. Let me, let me duplicate this. So this should, because uh, there's two columns and this content is aligned left, it should fall down gracefully. So what it does is a certain breakpoint, it just stacks them um, as we see here. And ideally at some point, there'd be a way to like center this on mobile. Um, I think at some point we'll start to see responsive controls being added to blocks. Uh, we don't have that yet. Again, you could do the same similar thing with the utility class saying if, if is mobile basically center these items. Um, There's a, another related question about mobile actually. Is there a yeah. way to define the max image size for mobile without CSS at this time? Uh, so like in, for instance, if you don't want this to be as big and we just wanted to, I'm going to inspect the browser and do something like, like whatever max width 200 pixels or something like that. Um, we would obviously want to center that. No, there, there is not a way to do that with mobile, um, without using custom CSS. And another question are groups and columns both using Flexbox? Do you know? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. I keep thinking like it's not CSS grid, but it's Flexbox. Uh, I do think um, they're investigating using different types of um, CSS systems to to do certain things. Um, but as far as I know, it's it's Flexbox. Cool. And then there was one more, uh, or just a clarification. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not using WooCommerce, right? Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, this is. Um, in this case, this was just, a, I want to sell a product and it links off to any place, you know, Gumroad or whatever um, kind of thing, external link. Um, I cool. thought about the WooCommerce thing. It's a big, this was more about selling one product than it was to, to do a store. Um, although that's good fodder at some point for a different workshop is just how to do WooCommerce things. So that is definitely, definitely. something that's on my radar. Awesome. I don't see anything else, Brian. So Frost comes with, and I'm going to be adding more. One of the settings, this is a little bit of an aside, but just to kind of show some cool stuff. Um, Frost comes with a, um, let's double check that I'm, oh, I didn't, I took it out of this one. Um, some, some themes and Frost will uh, have what's called a custom block style, which allows you to, um, and I believe the image might have them. Like you can see here, like if you select a block, there's this thing called styles and you could do things like, style it like at a not just do things like border or border radius but like apply like a full style to something um and so groups in some cases have custom styles like where there would be like box shadows and things like that where you could like select this group and apply like a predefined box shadow like around that so like maybe you wanted to like stand out or whatever um there are some cool things that are coming and in some themes already are there and in frost will become them. Uh, and so things like that are also coming. Uh, for example, a custom block style for the button. We can see if we wanted to do an outline, we could do an outline, things like that are pretty cool. Um, again, that's using a block style here.